For a while now, I've really wanted to try an infinite canvas in Webflow. Um, I don't know if that's the actual term. I just kind of made that up. But what we're looking at here, shopping.google.com, it's like really close to kind of the idea that I want to try. So the idea here is that I can click and drag and just see a lot of different categories. And I can even scroll with my mouse and um, again, just kind of continue scrolling infinitely. Um, now, I don't think we can do exactly this inside of Webflow, but I think we can get really close and essentially communicate the same idea, which is that there's a lot of things to explore as you use our site. So get exploring. Um, okay, so a couple of the limitations that we'll run into. One is um, we're not going to have an infinite canvas. Like we can't have an infinite number of items. Um, we'll definitely have limitations there with the Webflow CMS. And uh, in terms of what we can do in Webflow, I don't think we want to have too many things in the header because then the website will take a long time to load. We want to have a limited amount of images and things like that that the browser is having to load. Secondly, we're not going to have the kind of like click to drag or scroll to drag kind of thing. Um, I think I'm just choosing to keep it simple and use a um, mouse move and viewport trigger. All right, so let's actually jump into Webflow and get started. So I'm going to add a fresh div block here and move it up to the top. Let's go ahead and give it an HTML header class. And in terms of class, let's call it um, infinite header. And by the way, I was doing this just because as a test, like before recording, and figure out that infinite is extremely hard to spell. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with what I end up writing. For height, let's go ahead and give it a height of 100 vh. And we're also going to make it an overflow of hidden so that. Um, the infinite canvas that's nested inside of here uh, will not um, be seen outside of the header. And we'll also make the position relative. All right, so the reason I'm choosing to do this is because, again, we don't we want a faux infinite canvas in terms of like we're just kind of intimating or, or hinting at an infinite number of products, but we actually want the user to be able to scroll and see the content down below, or at least I do. <laughs> okay. Um, inside of the infinite header, let's go ahead and add a collection list. And we're going to source it to a blogs collection that already has 20 items inside of it, which is great. And then inside of here, let's go ahead and call this, uh, whoops, we'll call it um, infinite canvas. All right, so this is the thing that will actually kind of be floating inside of the header, um, acting like uh, uh, that infinite canvas feel. And we're going to give it a width of 150 VW and 150 VH. So we're going to give it some room beyond the margins, beyond the viewport, so that we have some room to play with in terms of moving things left and right and up and down. Um, we're also going to position it absolutely. And that'll come in um, when we get to adding our kind of like header content. You'll see why we did that. Um, and then finally, with infinite header, we want to set this to uh, vertical uh, direction flex and everything aligned in the middle uh, because since this is positioned absolute, now it's going to be positioned in the middle of our infinite header. All right, next we've got our list and we want to set this to flex as well. And the idea here is that our cards are going to be nested inside of this. Um, and so we definitely want to set this to children wrap so that the different cards are going to start um, wrapping down to the second and third row. With collection item, let's go ahead and call this a card wrapper. And again, we definitely want to set it to uh, do not shrink or grow. And we're going to give it about, let's say, 32 pixels of padding. And that's going to create the spaces between those cards. Then we're going to add a new div block. And this is going to be um, the infinite card. All right, so here we're going to use uh, relative units um, to make sure that as the browser gets scaled up and down, the cards are still going to kind of give that infinite feel. So we're going to do, um, I think I decided 16 VW by 24 VW was good. And let's actually give this a background color uh, so you can see what I'm doing here. Alrighty. And we also want to make sure that it's set to overflow hidden because we're going to nest some things inside of it. Let's give it some corner radius so that it has that kind of like techie 
um, feel. And we'll also give it some uh, box shadow. Now I'm gonna keep the shadow pretty simple. I usually use actually different layers of box shadows, like three to five. Here, since we're moving the canvas back and forth and the images are moving, just wanna keep it simple. So direction will be 220, distance of 10, blur of 20, and let's make it a 20% black. All right, so again, pretty simple. And we'll also set this to position relative. That way we can position an image absolutely inside of the card. So set that to image cover. I've gone over image cover a lot in terms of how I use this utility class, but essentially we're setting it absolutely inside of our card, setting it to 100% width and height, and then the object fit is set to cover, which essentially makes it um, behave like a background image. And then we can go ahead and um, sync it to our CMS. All right, so now we got that. Um, I think the one thing that we're missing is with this infinite flex, let's go ahead and set things in the middle so that our cards are showing up in the middle. Okay, cool. Um, let's preview what we've done so far inside of the previewer. And this is super close to kind of like the final result of what we want. Um, so the, I think the last thing that we need is a fade and then adding our animation. So for the fade, uh, this kind of like hard stop here where the cards just kind of stop. I feel like it kind of breaks a little bit the illusion of this infinite canvas. So I'm going to add something called infinite fade. And let's position it absolutely at the bottom of our header. And we'll make it 33% tall. Okay. Then um, let's go ahead and add a gradient set it here and let's grab this white and let's actually make it zero percent uh, then we'll grab this black and make it a full white and then we just need to trade these uh, stops the positions as it were all right and now we've got this nice kind of fade into the next section and i feel like that just helps to kind of keep the illusion of the infinite all right uh, it's kind of like when songs fade out, like it just, you get this when the song just keeps going on for eternity. Same thing for these cards. All right, then with the interaction, let's go ahead and set a page trigger. Notice I'm not using an element trigger because um, if I did, like once I hit this section, like these cards would kind of snap back to position. So I really want the whole um, page to kind of react to, uh, or the canvas to react to the whole page. So we're going to do mass move in viewport and let's go ahead and set up a new one called infinite canvas just to keep everything nice and tidy. I'm going to grab my infinite canvas here and we're going to add move transforms and I'm going to experiment here, but essentially I think I want to move things around 10%. So we'll see if this works. All right. So um, I'll explain this in just a second here. It's a little bit easier to see how this works when we're in the preview mode here. So live preview is off. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm just realizing that something is off. Ah, oh, it's because I didn't hit percent. And I think we did the same thing here, maybe. Indeed. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so now, um, oh, my X isn't working. Um, okay, so why isn't the X? So this should be negative 10% and then this is 10%. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So if you look at these little badges here, they're essentially indicating uh, where the mouse is in the viewport. Kind of, kind of works like those, um, those like charts you did in geometry class. So when the mouse is up here in the top left corner, um, it's at 0%. Um, and then when it's in the bottom right corner, it's at 100% on both axes. So essentially what we're telling um, the animation is when it's in the top left corner, move the canvas in that same direction towards the top and to the left by 10%. And what's in the bottom right corner, move the canvas in that direction to the right and to the bottom 10%. All right, we also wanna add um, some smoothing, something around 80% usually works pretty well. And now we've got that kind of like infinite canvas feel uh, that we saw on the shopping Google uh, example. 
All right, one last thing to kind of finish this out. Uh, we definitely want to have some way to have a um, like heading content in here. So we're going to add a container. And then let's give it a class of infinite container, which is a little bit misleading because <laughs> it's definitely not infinite. But one of the things that we want to do is set it to position relative. Um, and actually, I'm going to show you why we want to do that. Um, so you can see here that the text block is on top of the images. I come back out to my container and take that off. The heading is going to go behind um, the infinite canvas. And the reason for that is because um, both the fade and the canvas have a position of relative. And anything that is a position element, in other words, it's not static, uh, the first one in the list here, anything that is a position element is always going to layer on top of non-positioned, aka static elements. So just by making our container relative, it's going to stack on top. Okay, we also want to um, go ahead and set this to text align center. Then let's add a div block and, um, oops, I think what we want to do here is let's go ahead and nest the heading inside of there. And we'll call this um, uh, infinite heading content. I guess the name doesn't really matter all that much in this specific example. And we're going to set the display to inline block. Uh, so that instead of taking up the full width of the container, the infinite container, <laughs> it's just taking up as much room as the content inside of it. And we'll give it a background of white. Now you can see kind of what we're doing here. <laughs> uh, we'll also give it that same corner radius as the cards and a little bit of vertical padding and then probably a nice healthy amount of um, horizontal padding. So something like 64 pixels is probably fine. Um, and then let's go ahead and write out, uh, whoops, infinite canvas. And maybe we can add a paragraph. And let's give actually this a max width, something like um, 520 perhaps. Um, not too bad. And let's uh, make the paragraph just a touch bigger. Maybe something like 20 pixels, uh, which happens to be 1.25 rems. Um, and then we'll just type out, there's a lot of stuff to explore. And then button. All right. There we are. Uh, whoa. Um, interesting button. <laughs> Let's try button three. Or perhaps button two. Just something that is a little bit more of like a fill. Okay, there we go. And uh, here, let's make this margin bottom zero. All right. So this is pretty darn close to, I think, um, kind of like the idea that we were trying to communicate of this infinite canvas type thing. Um, maybe we could add some box shadow to um, our heading content, um, but it kind of gives that illusion of there being just tons of stuff to explore and kind of inviting you to get into the website. So. I'll go ahead and leave the reading link and the staging URL in the description box below. Um, if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I don't do videos a lot, but maybe like once a month, every two months. <laughs> um, but anyways, you'll get alerted whenever the, the blue moon rises. So thanks all, and I'll catch you in the next one.